or maybe it was the giant black bag that seemed to contain something squishy. So, uh, just before we get into it, this first story is uh, a little strange. I feel like it's more of an art piece than anything. A lot of sharp, quick sentences. Anyways. Two years ago, Buster moved into a house directly across the street from me. This house has a long history of being a sanctuary of sorts for animals, homeless people, addicts, and fugitives. Sometimes, it's a nightmare to live across the street from it, but it has gotten a bit better over the years. Enter Buster. Buster fixes up vehicles and lawnmowers. He turns bicycles into motorcycles. He collects subwoofers and installs them for people. Test drives, constant revving and loud music. This is all to say, there's a lot of noise. But whatever, live and let live, right? But Buster, he can stay awake for a couple days. And the noise started continuing into the wee hours of the night. This kept me awake. I can't stay awake for days. I get angry. Asking Buster nicely to respect the noise ordinance ends up not working. I continue to lose sleep. Eventually I snap and yell at him. It works. For a while at least. I end up yelling at him a few more times. I screw up. The last time I lost my cool... Buster starts banging on his chest against my fence. Then he charges across the street and stops at the property line. Buster tells me he's going to come over someday and beat my ass. That reminds me of that uh, UFC clip of that guy. I'll try and include it. It's funny. Yeah, you better win your fight because I'm coming on your ass, boy. I'm coming for that ass. What? Pause. <laughs> Okay, anyways. But the noise after midnight stops, and I go back to ignoring Buster. One night, I'm out for a walk during the height of Pokemon Go. Buster drives by the opposite side of the road, slams his brakes. He turns around and drives next to me very slowly, just staring at me. I stop. He rolls up to the stoplight which is green at the time, but he stops anyways. I watch. He watches. Eventually the light turns yellow, and he speeds away. Over the next year and a half, occasionally Buster flips me off, glares at me, revs his engine, etc, etc. Basically, Buster likes to remind me from time to time that he doesn't care for me. This morning I got up, had my coffee on the porch. I was watching the birds, and I didn't notice Buster. That is until I hear a chainsaw revving up. I look over. Buster's in the middle of the street, just staring at me and revving his chainsaw. I freeze and watch. He eventually kills the engine and walks back to his home. I don't think Buster is dangerous, but for a few hours after that, I felt like I was going to vomit. So, part of me was scared. Survival instincts kicking in, maybe. This morning was so bizarre that it felt like nobody would believe me if I told them, but I just had to get this out. So, thanks for listening. Oh, and be careful about losing your cool with people. You never know how they might react. So this particular story took place during a 500 mile long hike in Norway in the summer of 2014. We were just two girls hiking, me and my friend Jenny, both experienced hikers. The particular trail we were following 
is a less frequented pilgrim's trail from Oslo to Trondheim. Think the Camino, but more isolated and, in my experience, quite a bit harder. All in all, it was a wonderful hike, but in hindsight, my friend and I did make one pretty big mistake. We decided to walk the route in reverse. We did this because we wanted to end the trip with meeting family in Oslo. As far as we had read, it was possible to walk the route in reverse. In practice, it often felt more like a puzzle than a hike, even with the great GPS and maps that we had. The main problem is that the route had been altered several times, which is often noticeable from the right direction, but when you go in reverse, it often led to stretches of the trail that had been long abandoned. Anyways, this particular encounter took place about three weeks into the hike. We'd been following pilgrim markers the entire time, but they were getting harder to spot and were increasingly either broken or covered in weeds. This was a dead giveaway, that we were once again off track. Figuring that the roots would merge again, we marched on. We were in a forest on the side of a small mountain, broken by the occasional tiny field. This was nothing unusual in and of itself. Norwegians didn't have much flat land, and they tend to farm on the mountain sides. What was different about this, though, is that everything seemed abandoned. No animals on the fields, or any signs that they had been there for years. Even more strangely, there was overgrown, abandoned equipment, and no house was visible in sight. At this point, we were honestly just confused, but not creeped out yet. The trail itself was barely visible, and the forest itself seemed unusually thick and mossy. Jenny and I were starting to get frustrated. The overgrowth was much too thick to make room for a tent, and the ground was getting increasingly swampy. It was starting to get dark, and we were nowhere near a campsite. We were off trail, and there was clearly no one around to ask for directions. Of course, that's exactly when we saw him. At first we were almost overwhelmed with a sense of relief at seeing a fellow human, but that didn't last long. Maybe it was the fact that he was wearing business casual clothes in the middle of a seemingly isolated stretch of forest. Or maybe it was the giant black bag that seemed to contain something squishy. Or even still, maybe it was the fact that he was carrying a giant chainsaw. Either way, he seemed to have some of the coldest eyes I'd ever seen. He didn't smile, didn't wave, and he didn't seem all that pleased to see us. He just kept walking the trail towards us, and we just kept walking the trail towards him. Luckily for Jenny and I, he walked right by us calmly, without sparing a second glance. He passed by us and disappeared into the forest, and once we couldn't hear him anymore, we ran like our lives depended on it. That night, we just kept on walking. Definitely one of the creepiest encounters of my life. This may not seem creepy now, but at the time, I was pretty freaked out. Backstory. I live in a very small town, maybe 6,000 people at most, in rural Kansas. I'm not exactly sure how long ago this happened, but if I had to guess, maybe like seven years ago. Back then, we also used to have this weird neighbor. Besides being drunk all the time, his front yard had piles of wood and animal skulls all over the place. Anyways, I was living with my boyfriend at our old house where we had a decently big backyard. I think this story took place in the summer 
as it was nice out, and I was in the backyard for a little bit. Something you should know about our property is that our backyard goes right up to the city park, and across the street from that small park is a bunch of houses. That's all to say, I heard some loud yelling coming from those houses just down the street from me. Being curious and having terrible night vision, I quietly slipped inside, grabbed my camera, just to use the zoom of course, and went back to the corner of our backyard. There was bushes there, so I was well hidden. This sounds kind of sketch at this point, but anyways. I knew the owner of the house that the yelling was coming from, and at first I just assumed it was one of his friends that had had a bit too much to drink. That is until I heard a small engine being started. It didn't take me long to realize it was a chainsaw. The psycho neighbor was using it to threaten my nice neighbor. I was about to call the cops when they showed up actually. I just stayed there, frozen in my bush, as the guy was arrested and taken away. P.S. I don't know why, but I did hit the record button on my camera. She doesn't know why. I guess I thought that, if anything did happen, maybe I'd have proof of it. Turns out, the video was crap, so it wouldn't be much use anyways. I'm just glad. This guy didn't decide to come over to my house. Hey guys, scary stories here. I hope you're doing well. That last neighbor kind of sounded like a, what do you call it? A busybody or something like that? Nosy Nancy. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video tonight. If you're still here and you're still listening, I hope you're taking care of yourself and treating yourself well. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like. If you disliked it, give it a dislike. Share it with your friends, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.